tonight, and you have your way, Lord, I pray, in this service, and we ask it now in that precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we remember thy nation, Israel, Lord, that you be with them. I know that you have your eye upon them, and we thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can be seated this evening. Uh, Sister Becky Sue, I think there's some work back there for you. And uh, praise the Lord. We must be versatile in the hour that we live in. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask Brother Mike to come lead us in the song service. And uh, amen. Uh, number 69 in the blue book. <clears throat> and if anyone has a number, just... Sixty nine, number sixty nine. <laughs> the
Number eight in the blue book.
us even when we don't feel him. He's always there. Does anyone else have a number? Seventy-five. Yeah, I'd have to say Joyce probably sings that one better. <laughs> every, every time is not due. Every time. Not say. Let me tell you what I do, and it brings a blessing too. I just steal away somewhere and I pray.
I had so many plans they didn't include the Lord and His mercies I was far from the truth Living my own life just like I wanted to Oh, but it didn't take long for me to see where I was at the bottom in need of my father's Desperate and broke, I looked up to the Lord above. I was low enough to look up, low enough to discover I needed a Savior, someone to rescue me. I couldn't live without you and my life Low enough, low enough to look up Now my life is complete since I let Jesus come in There's peace in my heart now that I'm born again There's no turning back to the life that I lived without him Yes, I, I'm looking forward to the day Jesus comes and I want to thank him for all he has done It's hard to believe where I was where he brought me from Someone to rescue me Low enough to realize I couldn't live without you in my life Low enough, low enough to look up I had so many plans but they didn't include the Lord and His mercies. I was far from the truth. Living my own life just like I wanted to. Oh, but it didn't take long for me to see where I was in the bottom in need of my Father's blood. Desperate and broke looked up to the Lord above I was low enough to look up Low enough to discover I needed a Savior Someone to rescue me Low enough I couldn't live without you in my life Low enough, low enough to look up Amen. And that's where I was one time. I had to be so low that the only way out was to look up. And, uh, and that's where I found them. The Lord. <clears throat> Brother Gary, Sister Kathy, do you have a song? No. Sister Jana, do you have a song?
One day a crowd was gathered Watched the giant fight This little shepherd boy named David Who served God with all his might He often great armor But he chose a sling and a stone He said you come to me with a sword and a shield But I come in the name of the Lord See the virgin is the river and a cold and college star mirror of the father's glory lies beside her in the star. Oh he is mercy's incarnation marvel and his miracle. For 
the virgin gently owes the glorious and possible oh, oh, with you. water into wine or oh, touch the weapons burst the children rubble full men and divine oh praise the wisdom of the father who has spoken to his son oh speak and seal he calls us to the Glorious and possible. transgressions and he bear eternal scars oh he was raised for our salvation and his righteousness is ours oh praise oh praise him praise the glory of this red is great so full oh if your souls now and receive the glorious and possible. Water into wine, oh, touch the weapons, burst the children, love both women and divine. Oh, praise the wisdom of the Father who has spoken to his son. Oh, speak and seal, he calls us to the glorious and possible transgressions and he bear eternal scars oh he was raised for our salvation and his righteousness is ours oh praise oh praise him praise the glory of this grand rich grace so full oh if your souls now
doors. <laughs> the anchor holds. Though the ship is battered, the anchor holds. Though the sails are torn, I have fallen. 
Oh, praise the Lord. Truly, that uh, it's a privilege to know the Lord of the hour that we live in. He's done a lot for you and I, and uh, sometimes we don't realize how much it means to our soul knowing what the Lord has done for us. Uh, let's just stand. Heavenly Father, as we come to this part of this service, Lord, we are thankful that, Lord, just to hear your word, to hear your voice in the hour that we live in. There's nothing on our part that we know anything, Lord. It's all of you. And Lord, we just are hungry, Lord, just for what you would have for us. And I pray, Lord, that you would watch over this assembly and wherever, or your word. I know you're watching over your word wherever it goes, Lord. But we're thankful, Lord. And now I commit this service in your hands in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. I pray tonight. Amen. So what is going on in the world today? There's a lot. But to the average person on the street, he just looks in the eyes of what he sees in the news, media, and he makes his decisions on all that maybe he's learned from a secular point of view, but nowhere's does the man of the street has any reference or peace to know where he's living at in time, has no clue where they're at. And I was out fishing, not that you have to go fishing, but there was five of us and they don't know the Lord. And the wild ideas that you can come up with and, and how that man can trust on his conscience and on his information that he's received and that can vary as the sun if you want to or seven days a week but to you and I although there is all that if you want to, it seems like confusion in the world there's one stability in our day and that's the word of God and I thought well Lord Maybe I'll jump into some of these conversations and help, you know. But then when I look back and sometime when you're fishing alone on the, on the bank and you got no fish biting and you, all you got to do is just think on the Lord, well, then you get to find out that uh, sometime it's not wise to try to convert or to help someone along because if there is just argument's sakes for my point of view and your point of view, Nothing gets done anyway. You, you can talk to your blue in the face, and I've seen two talk to the blue in the face with different opinions, and it just doesn't go nowhere. So when the dust settles, nobody has changed their mind. Nothing can change their mind once a human vessel has decided what it wants to look at. It takes the power of God and his word to make the change that we can see a proper picture. And if we want to go to a certain foundation, this, the Bible has a lot of things in there. It's not going to point you everyday events as far as that concern. But there's enough written in it that shows where we're at, where we're going, and what's up the road. And I thank God for that. What an hour we live in. Had the Apostle Paul lived in this hour, he would, have, he would have enjoyed the things that God has brought down in the hour that we live in. But we live also in a turmoil type of a time. 
where things are sh being shaken and God is shaken and has been shaken for a while on different levels. There's some shaking that takes place that is gradual over time and it builds up to a certain height and all of a sudden out in the news media you get to see what is going on. But there's other times you don't see it till it sort of like, excuse the expression, hits the fan. So as a place to start, and I know we looked at this scripture before, but I want to go in Hebrews. Now when Paul was speaking in Hebrews, he was not talking to the man of the world. He's talking to believers. And in the 12th chapter, See that you refuse not him that speaketh. Well, first of all, you have to know that somebody is speaking. And how does God speak? Yes, he can literally speak with a sounding voice that the human ear can hear it. But his word has a certain effect of speaking to you and I as we see it come on ground and having an effect to you and me. That's in Hebrew chapter 12, verse 25. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. Now, if we can't recognize who's speaking, then I'd have to say we're in a bad shape. Really, in the religious realm, they can say, oh, yes, we can see preachers speaking. And that's all well and fine, it's preachers are speaking. But it's not the man that you've got to listen to. It's the spirit and the revelation that comes forth. Because God's word, that's how it will come to be expressed in the earth. And if it is God's work, he works on both ends, on the preacher as well as the hearer that's hearing the word of God. And he can mold, change, or, and get us to come in, in line with what he wants us to be in the hour that we live in. And says, see that you refuse not him that speaketh, if they escape not, that refuse him that spake on earth, how on earth much more shall we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Now he's putting some emphasis. Jesus spoke on earth. But he says, how much more? That him that speaketh from heaven. And when God used a prophet and spoke from heaven, that was a dividing line, and God's word is, has a shaking effect. Every revelation has a shaking effect. Yes, it will have some shaking effect in the, in the religious realm of things, but at the same time, in order for it to be on ground, for God to fulfill certain part of his word, he's going to not only shake within the religious realm, but he's going to shake in the political, in the economic realm, and in governments as well. Verse 26, And whose voice shakes the earth, but now has promised, saying, Yet once more I shall not, shall, shall I shake not the earth only, but the heavens. And this word, yet once more, signify the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. So we're seeing in the hour of living a shaking on all levels. And the shaking that's taken place in the hour that we live in. There's been some shaking worldwide. When we're talking about our countries. 
there's a shaking or a, a movement or a something that has caused people to catch up a hold of a thought that, like those in the middle class, they're discontented with their, their condition. And the average man will take so much and he might not, he doesn't say overly too much. I know in politics in the past, you could make your vote known by voting things here and there. And it seems like every time that man turns around to the average man to change his situation, because he wants to be free as well as the Christian does. In the sense he wants to have a certain lifestyle. To you and I, our lifestyle is with God and what the, the God's kingdom is about. But the average man wants to live in a, a certain comfort as well. And so God has allowed this shaking to take place. It was a slow buildup over the years, how that it started out. I remember when I was young that mainly it was the men that was working and the women or staying at home. Now the average per woman that was single, she, yes, she could work. There's no, no forms about that. But it was the governments that first started that wanted the, to take women because they could pay them a much lower wages. So the government was thought they would make themselves richer by putting more people to work to get more revenue. But they saw, they saw the short term and not the long term. Because now that started to break down the fiber of the homes. And as the men and, the, and women were working in the workforce, because when the women went into the workforce, greedy mankind want to pay them lower wages than the men were paying at that time. Instead of them coming up to the wages, most cases, the wages of the men has dropped down. And the rich got a hold of that idea real quick. They, gave, they sold us all kinds of ideas concerning, well, we, uh, we'll send the menial jobs now to the poor countries, and we'll be rich by just knowledge. Well, it didn't work out. It was a ruse, all it was. And some of the middle class has had it up to here. And that's not just here in, in North America, but it's also in Europe, and it's also in the Middle East area, or of every country. It sets up a condition that God allowed it to be that way, so when the time comes, in order to get the nation shook in their proper perspective for the Ezekiel 38 war and for the signing of the Antichrist, there had to be some changes needed to be made. And so therefore there became a shaking. The first shaking that we saw was of the, some of the poorest was concerning this Arab Spring. How many remembered prior to 2010, those nations, they had dictatorships the rich was rich and the poor was poor, but there wasn't all too much turmoil. Then it just, God allowed a certain man to burn himself in effigy, and that sparked a fire revolution through the Middle East. And not every country started at once, but over time it spread to every country in the Middle East area. The one that we see now that's more or less in the forefront is Syria. It is not settled yet. But prior to 2010, some of those countries had a certain formidable military and economic situation. But when that fire went through a revolution called the Arab Spring in the Middle East, it destroyed and changed the the makeup of those countries, because they couldn't remain no longer having dictate, despots, and them ruling the nation, because when the time comes, 
as the poor people wakes up that we want the same thing as the other people in the world, there's something in them and still in them. They want us a system like they have, not that they want Christianity, but they want the same benefits as North America has and Europe has. Since that's hungering in them, yes, they're going to be in turmoil because they didn't know much about leadership and democracy and things like that. That's why you have ISIS. That's why you have Al-Qaeda. Actually, there was 192 different little groups when these nations were hit by revolutions. Each little na- tried to come up with a solution in wanting to change their, their condition only to fall into the hands of some leader that was like a, a thug, if you want to. And so they're going through still yet a turmoil. But what's holding them back is their religion. But God has an answer for that. It's all pointing to a point in time. Europe seemed to be also very, seemed stable to some extent over the years, as much as Europe could be. But there too, North America, at one time when our, our countries were developed, the company sometimes would take care of their workers. But now, they don't think twice to get rid of you just for any reason. If I can make more money by getting rid of you and not caring about the people, the richer get richer and the poor gets poorer, and while it's not my, they, it's like, I'm not my brother's keeper, I, they don't care. That's coming back to bite them now. The revolution that took, started in 2010 in the Middle East, and it's still ongoing, and I've just seen in the, loo- in the, loo- in the news. Yes, I've seen some loon when I was fishing, okay? All right, that's here or there. I've seen in the news, Turkey. It, too, is going to be going through some changes. Their new president, Egon, more or less, uh, well, you can't say it to one extent, but it seems like he manipulated the election and they won by a very small margin to have power, but it's to bring Muslim belief in Turkey. More stronger and you'll start seeing things between the Christians and the Muslim over time as time goes on. Let me read you some of the things that uh, this fellow said. In a, slanderous, in a slanderous attack on the Jewish state, Turkish President Ergon accused Israel of racism. Well, Israel is not racist, but they are. Turkey is and warned Trump from moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. And here's what, that's one thing there, that's probably got hit under his, under his, his shoulder, or whatever case, maybe we got him, you get him going. But anyway, but here's the thing he was saying, he's calling for now. He says, because Trump is moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, he's calling on the Muslim to flood the Temple Mount. Jerusalem is the centerpiece. Jerusalem is going to be that cup of trembling. He don't know it, but we do. And if he wants to pick up concerning Jerusalem, it ain't going to go well for him. Then he goes on to say, this Turkish president blasted Israel in an Istanbul speech Monday accusing the Jewish state of racism and warns against taking any changes to the status quo on the Temple Mount. Bemoaning an Israel presence, he called on the the Muslim from around the world to flood the Al-Aska Mosque. Every day that Jerusalem is under occupation, 
is an insult to Muslim. Now, that shows their heart's desire. God's desire, Jerusalem belongs to Israel. So there is an anti-spirit against the spirit of God. And God has put in his word that in that day, that, the, that those ever pick up that cup of trembling, God's going to destroy them. Not necessarily militarily wise, but also economic or have turmoil in their countries. And of all the countries, now it doesn't show here, but Turkey's right up the top here. When you look at Ezekiel 38 and 39, that air spring fire that's been going through all old Middle East Muslim country, now is touching Turkey, which is one of the last bastions to be of that group. And that tells me we're getting close to that miracle war. Because God has touched all those countries to put them in some sort of a disarray. Because when he gets Israel to start that miracle war, and Israel is going to start it, not alone, God's going to be on ground with the angelic beings on ground as well. And those Arab is going to be dealt with a blow like they never have been hit before. It's if that air spring, they didn't like the sort they were in, that was on the economic side of things. But God's going to give them a blow on the religious side of things. Here's a God that actually is God. He's going to come on ground and he's going to vindicate that he is. And when the dust settles in that miracle war, all those Arab half brother in the Muslim roundabout that's involved in that miracle war, they will no longer protest Israel. Israel would be at peace. But Turkey is going to remain on the fringes of it because Turkey is going to be one of the countries that's going to be coming in Ezekiel 38 and 39. So it has to be made ready as well. It first started out of God is now shaking the North American Christian world. It started with England with Brexit. People, the, why did they vote to get out? They were in a, seemed like a, a nice situation. Being the, all countries together would give them economic power. But the little fella... The little man, he was being pushed in the corner. He was being, he's having things shoved down his throat, just like property tax here in New Brunswick. Some people really got, uh, don't go there. Okay, that's politics. But nevertheless, that's how government operates. But it's backfire on them. The people voted, we want out of it. We are tired of you politicians. It doesn't matter which party we put in, you're all doing the same thing. Because the rich watch for the rich. And the poor, well, that's the middle class's problem. No sooner than it hit England, you had an election in America. They voted for Trump. Now, he's a horse of a different color. But God allowed a man with no political experience, but at least he could see the riding current that's in the country. The majority of the people that is in the middle class sort of area was really discontent with other parties. And all he had to do, he says, I'm for you, the middle class blue-collar worker, and we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll change your situation. And it was like bait on a, on a hook 
for fish. He didn't have to do much. He got voted in there. This was a slap to the rich. The rich ought to realize and maybe wake up to the point, you are the ones that have created these circumstances in these countries. Oh, but they'll say, well, we, know we have to compete, and if we don't, we, we lose our business. You're all the same. Doesn't matter whether it's China, Russia, North America, Europe. Now in Europe, they just went through an election. Now there was two extremists in there. One thing it showed me, Marion Le Pen has a Jewish background and she wanted to make a reversal in France of the Muslim influence going in and changing their laws. She had got rid of the scarf and the whole nine yards. In other words, if you want to be, come to France, you have to be French and live by the French laws. But it was, she didn't win because she was too extreme on one side. But Emmanuel Macron, he too was wanting to represent change. He's not of your formal government parties. And he's like Trump, I'm going to drain the swamp. And he says here, in his inaugural Sunday as France's new president at the Elysee Palace in Paris, and immediately he launched into his mission to shake up the French politics, the world economics, and the European Union. It's because the people's fed up. And he picked up how the people in there are feeling. There was an article that I read concerning Europe. I think somewhere in this vicinity of 80% of all the countries that, is, that makes up the EU wants change just like France or Britain wants. They're sick and tired. Now, why are you going in down the political road? It looks like to you and I that knows the truth, seems like Europe is going to just be blown away. Forget it. It's just... God allowing the scarecrow, but he wants to make some changes in the mind and the situation. So when the miracle war and Ezekiel war finishes, then those people of the, that forms the head of the beast will be made compatible with the people that forms the body of the beast. God knows exactly how to run things and allow things to take place. So he's shaken these countries. As that is taking place for their economic situation, that keeps popping up. I gotta tell Eve has to stop that. Well, there, get rid of it. It just wants to stick around, I guess. So, as God is allowing that to shake up, and in talking while I was fishing, those that were there, I don't want to mention names. They were concerned about North Korea. I can see there is a concern. He's got some nuclear weapons, but he doesn't have a delivery to send them. He's working hard to do it. This is causing America to come in and Trump to make the gesture he did. All this is putting pressure in that Eastern Asian country, not for the beginning of the week of Daniel, because if I'm looking at God's picture right, it says not a king of these, the kings of the East are going to come together. How is it all going to unfold? I don't know, but I know God is shaking it. It's causing these countries to where they were in a comfort zone for the last 40 years, now is getting out of that comfort zone. Yes, it could go haywire. 
No, I don't think North Korea is a threat to North America. Because with the large boomer submarine that can actually not destroy a country, but destroy a whole continent, King Young, I mean, he's got to be stupid to try it. But if he did, that he wouldn't be smart enough and he tried something like that. Well, if the states have to use nuclear weapons against theirs in the, middle, in the immediate area, then it's just like China. Hey, they're next door to us. We don't want some radiation come our way. So it's causing China to be on a defensive mode. This is all playing part in God's plan of shaking up the Far East. But that will be stayed in the shaking till the middle of the week onward. But it's the beginning of it. It's been a while since God's been shaking that air spring. Oh, it looks like it's a turmoil thing. Everything goes, there's this group and that group and that. If you're looking at just at the group and just the the day-to-day -day news is, that's taking place that you're hearing, forget it. Look at the big picture. What is God wanting to accomplish in this? He's causing disturbance. So when it comes to the place where he intervenes, he won't have to wait till the people, the majority of people, to get ready to be part of that system because he knows they're going to be joining the B system. That's so much for the political side. But now let's, because it's time, whether one hears it or don't hear it, if it's time for God's word to come on ground, yes, the Christian hears the word of God. But has it, in order to fulfill that he was saying that the the body of the beast is going to be joined to the head of the beast, then on ground it has to have a shaking effect there as well. What is an earthquake when it shakes? What causes it? Remember, God take, looks at natural things to typ that typify spiritual things. An earthquake is two opposing forces. It comes in against one another, and all of a sudden, boom, there's a shake that takes place. Well, look at Israel and the Muslim countries. It's going to be an earthquake one of these days, not a physical earthquake, but God's going to really set this thing off. So the Word of God does not only affect us, the believers, or the, in the bride's side of things, but it has a reaching effect in the world because his word has to come to pass. When I look at what God, in 1963, brought forth six seals through a prophet. It shook the religious element. When he brings the word on ground, it shook the denominations from those that were believing the word of God. They were become opposing forces. One was an antichrist spirit against the spirit of God. And if we keep that in mind, as God moves on, and brings more word on ground, it has the same effect. Because he's going to remove everything out of his kingdom, things that offend, that try to annul his word. What the denomination says, we don't believe no such thing as six seals the way you're saying it. William Branham. What happened? Oh, they're still preaching out there today, but they are being bundled up. But we've gone a long ways from then. So every major move, every major step that God makes, there's a shaking that takes place. Nobody likes it. Nobody likes to be rubbed the wrong way.
But there comes a pace in time, if Brother Branham said, well, it's going to offend the denomination, I think I'll hold back on this, he'd have paid the price. And then the time when Brother Jackson came around. Yet, it was not to the denominational world. Now God has brought us into that door of Matthew chapter 25, where he's instructing an element that should have been around the message to coming into the bride. And the tares, now here's something. And the door was shut and the bride went in. Yes, but when the door was shut, it shut to the foolish virgins. The revelation is shut to them. They're not going into the door even to find out. But tares tagged along. They are not giving a revelation. Because if the door was shut in 19, around 1963 through the foolish virgins, that means it's just pure seed. So we're walking around, everything should be fine. But not everything is fine. God tries each generation, each move by his word to see if we're following flesh or if we're following what his word that he's bringing on ground. They even complain in the days of Moses about Moses. Moses knew he couldn't speak very well. He wanted Aaron to speak for him. But nevertheless, God chose Moses to speak. And God says, I chose to speak to Moses, but not to you other characters over there, to core on them. It's just like in the days of Brother Branham. After he's gone off the scene, he didn't choose Lee Vale or, doctor, or this Dr. Divinity or, or, or the different ones that was right up there in that, in, in that move. He chose Brother Jackson. Speak. Now, yes, we must name a name, but it's not because of Brother Jackson. It's the truth, like you were saying this morning. It's the word of God that, that if, now remember, he that's speaking from heaven, he doesn't send it down on an MP3 so you can play it. He uses a preacher to preach it. And if you're looking at the preacher, you've got one hand tied behind your back. You've got to be listening to the voice, and that voice, in order to listen to it, we must have that spirit in us to hear that voice of the true word and when it's time for it to come on ground. And when it does come on ground, the bride doesn't go twisting, well, I don't know what he said. It's simple enough that you can receive it. You can see it. What's inside bears the witness to it. Not because, well, it sounded great. I think it's okay. That's not where it lies at all. It lies with the Holy Ghost inside. If this being the truth, now remember, that's where we sometimes have lost sight in these last, last hours that we're living in. It's, he's, he's speaking. Re, how much more if we refuse him that is speaking in our day, our time. I'm not talking about 20 years ago, 50 years ago. God spoke in those days in its appointed time through an appointed means that he wanted to. But now we're living in this hour. Sometimes you feel, not that you go by feelings, but something the Lord brings down, a beautiful revelation. You think the whole bride would receive it. And I realize some will hear it at different point in time, and God will, however he wants to deal with it, to open up their, the understanding when they come across it. But if they heard it, And they don't want nothing to do with it. Both of that tell me. 
I feel bad about it. But I can't twist their arm to believe it or to see it. Because it's just like what I saw this week. When two men have a different opinion, there's just no way you're going to change their mind, no matter how much you may try, unless God comes on the scene and he's the one that opens the revelation to every one of us. Now, they weren't talking about revelation or, or truth and things of that matter. It was lively at times, but it was a boring, to me it was boring. I could have stayed at home watching CNN to watch the same thing. And then put Fox News and see how they, they, they agree. But this is the hour. God has brought a word on ground. Was it hard to understand when century was over? Did we have to scratch and dig and find out whether this is right? Yes, in the days of Peter, James, and John, when, he told, when they were asking him, he says, for the time and the season is not for you to know. So there's no way of scratching and digging that they could ever know. First of all, events had not happened, so there was no way for them to know to begin with. It was an impossibility. But you and I seen the nation born in one day, as Isaiah spoke about it. That was before Peter and, and the apostles. But when that came to pass, we... We are a witness to that event in 1948, and Israel just celebrated their nationhood. We see it, we know it, that they're physically there, it's in the Word of God, but it being placed there puts something on ground in the Word of God in this much. When he says, that generation shall not pass away, that's in that verse. When they became a nation, it's hanging over them. That generation shall not pass away till all things be fulfilled. It don't take a university degree or a doctor or a divinity degree to know that it's not going to be a hundred years. So therefore, by revelation, we can say that centuries was over in 1948. But then from 1948, as centuries is over, that brings into what the Lord had spoke to Peter, for, not for you to know the day, the time and the season. Now, he mentioned, he mentioned that not for them to know the time and the season. If there is a time and a season, it was to be meant somewhere for someone to know that. And so here we are standing this year, as God has dropped it in, not because a vessel has expressed it, because he spoke and he brought the thought and impressed it that the centuries are over because Israel is there, yes, since 48, but in 2017, you have come to an understanding, centuries are now over. You are living in this time frame now in a third watch. Is this important? It is if we want to be watched and be ready as far as the revelatory garment we're putting on. That's, one as that's important in that aspect. And then when you preach like that, so, well, you're neglecting, you should be preaching about getting everybody perfect and, and correcting and speaking against sin. And it has its place. If you heard how to live right a thousand times, will a thousand and one time do the job? It's not on how you hear it a thousand and one time. It's the Holy Spirit has to speak to you and I. If we knew it from the, the tenth time, then it's in between the individual and God to get that part right. And me hammering it over and hammering it over. Hammering it over is not how God does things. He makes the change from inside. When we come to realization 
it has to be made and changed inside. And if we're as near as we are looking at tonight, concerning till the bride and the rapture come to that rapture, as we get closer and we see one major event coming on ground like that miracle war, I guarantee you there'll be a lot more people here in the evening than there is now. They'll be scared. Why? Why should you be scared? If you've been made ready, and if you've been working with the Lord to get yourself ready as far as your inner man, there should be no knees shaking or, or, or trembling. While we got, we, we, we got a cram to get, to get in, we, we have to make it. That's the inner man. But just as important... Well, you know, it's just another revelation, just another one sounding off. If God is speaking, that's just as important, getting your life lined up. What is it going to take? When I look at concerning our lives, how we live, and I'm not going to go around and say, can I come to your home, look around since... And knows you around, see what you're doing, and what's the, you got there around your house. That's the la last thing I'd ever want to do. But he that looks and sees everything, he's there. You have to answer to him, not the preacher. That's where it belongs. Are we so absent minded that we forget from Sunday to Monday? Oh, well, I don't know what he said, but. Uh, I'm going to live my life. Oh, yeah, everything's fine. We're just, we've got the more important thing to do. God takes the last place on the burner. Well, there's this show that I kind of like. It's not a, a, a dirty show. When I said documentary, and I, and I can watch it, these things till midnight and give zero time to the Lord. And we say we love him, Right? That's when we say we love him from that aspect. It's the human heart that's saying we love him. We got to learn to differentiate between the human heart of, of love and the love of God. The thing in this generation at the end time, we don't like to sacrifice the two things. Yeah. There's frosting on the cake, everything's going fine, everybody's, we have a, an anointing service, my, oh, I want to be there. But then God sometimes allows things to be a little quiet. And what is actually the Lord is saying, I want to see if you really love me. Now, if I say what I've been saying before, I don't want to reduce the crowd again. I mean, they ought to know it by now. You know that scripture I'm talking about? I was going to play that video, but I think it's... I don't want to beat you over the head. It's just to, to wake us up. What is important? What do we need? What are we looking at? That song will be somewhere looking for my, for my name. If all I know is just that there's supposed to be a half hour silence, well, in that half hour silence is that judgment seat. There's that scroll. He's not going to whisper you out in the bush. I don't know where's a, where, hey, so and so. No. The bride will be in an atmosphere that she can hear her name when it's called. If I was to call tonight somebody from Vancouver, please come here. Do you think he'd hear me? My voice can't travel that. Can't go beyond these walls. But you have to be in the milieu of where it's happening. And your name is not going to be called because you're in the woods somewhere or, or, or in a forsaken place. You're going to hear your name where God is getting the bride ready together. 
Oh, how this bride has to work together. Yes, we must all come to see eye to eye. And in this hour, there's home, a whole lot of ideas of how to see eye to eye. And we think it's going to happen this way. If we get together, we, we talk on the same revelation and whatnot with the different groups, we're going to see eye to eye. No, you're not. How did those that was walking with the Lord in the days of Brother Adam saw eye to eye in the days of Brother Brown? By his word. He was speaking. Through Brother Jackson is because he was speaking. Those that really heard his voice, that were born again, heard what God was saying. Some were just there to just to be there. Man can be religious, but there's nothing to be born again. And so when centuries was over, well, associated with centuries is decades. And as we, and that brought more attention to the word of God now of Matthew 24, verse 32, that generation shall not pass away when you see the fig tree put forth a branch and, uh, put forth a, and then puts forth leaves. He made two statements. He didn't say it's the first one or the second one, but it would only be applicable to the generation that would be there in time Time would negate that it is 1948. Because if it's 1948, all the preachers today would be in wheelchairs. They're being their mid or older 90s. Because remember, it's not just that the generation has to be there, somebody has to be fulfilled of lifting the voice together. And they should be, and this has to be a generation that still have enough uh, people in there that can be ministering. There has to be a fivefold ministry. Then there's thunders. We're not going to go to a senior home to listen to a thunder. Now, don't disrespect, please, that way. But I'm trying, trying to. What my point is, it's not 1948. It's 1967. Now, you say you set a date, 1967. Yes, but it is with a scriptural fulfillment when you see Jerusalem no longer occupied. What does that tell me? Oh, yeah, Jerusalem's no longer occupied. Well, involved with it was the Six-Day War. Israel got more land, so more leaves can be put on the land. Does it mean all the leaves were there? No. He says when it starts putting out leaves... He didn't say when the tree was full bloom. So what other scriptural event they could use concerning putting forth leaves? Yeah, well, Brother Fred, what about Ezekiel 38 and 39? That will be full bloom because all of Israel will be coming back after the Ezekiel war. So that's not the putting forth of leaves. All the leaves will be back. Yes, not the next day that the war ends, but within that immediate time frame. So we're living in decades now. And I know this resentment concerning the two days of Hosea. But when I look from Hosea being the Gentile church age, And you look at other events as well.
I can't find it right away, but even there, the Ezekiel, the burning of the weapons. We are in 2017 right now. From the beginning of the Gentile church age, and put 2,000 years on it, brings you to around 20, 26, 20, 27. That's 10 years. That would, because it sticks out here, and that brings you to the same ending point. And that's why I have confidence that the two days of Hosea is the Gentile church age. Because it points to the same time frame when these things are all coming together to climax us leaving here. And if that's bringing us to a climax of leaving here, brother and sister, if it's longer than 20, 26, 27, I won't be preaching then. Either I'll be in the grave somewhere, or I could be in an old people's home pushing a wheelchair. And that won't make, fulfill the part of that, to lift up the same voice. Getting back to the Gentile church age, yes, because of history, we don't know if it's 53, 54, 55, 56, 57. It's a space of time. God allowed it to be that way. So you and I will say, well, oh, if we know exactly the year, let's say it was 56 on the sixth month at the third day. We would calculate to the day, and we would get lazy to the last minute. That's how, we are, that's how fallen mankind is. Those that would, doesn't have the Spirit of God, that's what they would do. Look what they did in, in the days of Brother Branham when he's talking about that they were getting nearing of the coming of the Lord. Some sold everything to sit back on their back and waiting for the Lord to come. God never wanted us to do that. And because what I'm saying this morning, uh, morning, I'm sorry, it's the evening, right? They say fishing is easy. I was more tired than doing some work. I don't know why, but I got home, and that's why I asked Brother Ray to minister this morning. I was really dead tired. Still reviving a bit now, but anyway, okay, that's besides the point. Um, so anyway, getting back to the same picture, we are getting to the place that we know about when that time that it should be fulfilled. There's enough time for these things to be to fit in here. Is it like the same things we were looking at lately? If we all come before the judgment seat of Christ, you cannot put the judgment seat of Christ before the seventh seal is broke. And if you're listening on the internet, do you want to know why? It's because not everyone is in. Because in that day, he's going to judge every one of the bride in one place on that period of time. The judgment seat of Christ has a one event. It's not a one day or one hour event. So the judgment seat of Christ cannot happen before the seventh seal is broke. Because if he judged everybody else, and the, let's say there's three years left and still some bride in there, and they didn't get judged, oh, he's not going to say, well, I forgot about you guys there. I think I'll do, I'll do them later. No. So it doesn't fit over in the grace age. Yes, judgment begins at the house of God, but that's not the judgment seat of Christ. It's one day, an event. And let's look, skip over when the seventh seal is broke. And we go to the wedding supper, it can't be at the wedding supper. He's not going to judge his bride, his wife. He can judge his bride to be. And we can look at that in this way. When we found the one that we were going to marry, you didn't judge them to, oh, well, you know what I mean, in a negative way. We're looking at the judging them for the quality that you were looking for. 
right? So we did do uh, the expression date. We did do some shopping, not in the mall, but we were looking at our partner to be, because there's certain things we had a certain expectation, and they met those expectations. So therefore, you were we were more or less not judging them, but see if they fit that criteria. Well, once you married your wife, trust me, men, don't try to judge her. If you want peace in the home, don't do it. Or you'll have to find a place that's called a doghouse. Yeah. If you don't think it's true, try it. Now, please, no, don't. Yes, the family unit as a married man and married woman, there is some adjustments and so forth. But if it's done with the love of God, knowing the characteristic that God wants in us, then there's something that should work. That don't mean everything's going to be smooth. I'm a, I'll attest to that. But somewhere God will work things out. And after you realize that God gave me that right person, had it be somebody else, I'd be in the doghouse more often. I'd have to tell the dog to move. When you get older, it seems like you get up, you pick a little bit of wisdom. Takes time. Sisters, it takes time to change a man. But don't change him to something that he's not, though. And the same thing as the husband to the wife. Now, why did I get on that area? It's just. So he's not going to judge her there. And so the, day, the judgment seat of Christ can't be in the millennium. The only place it can be is during that half hour silence. And Luke chapter 19, verse 15, been sitting there ever since Jesus spoke about it. But he says, when he received the authority for the kingdom, he came down. And then, at that time, he brings them before them. So where is he down? He's down here on the earth. Where? But through that angelic being, here in that half-hour silence. And he's judging the living, mortal, breathing, what the Bible calls the quick. Now, the quick, don't belong to the, to the bride in heaven. They're not called quick. They're, in order to qualify for quick, that means you have to be alive and born again down here. That's what that word implies. Because it makes a difference between the quick and the dead in Christ, or, or the dead. The dead in Christ that sleep in heaven, the bride. Yes, there's the part about concerning sinners and, and saints, but they're not quick. Sometimes you could read that word quick, oh, he's fast, <laughs> he must be a quick one. That's not how it works. It means you've been quickened. If you've been quickened, then you have the Holy Ghost in you. The Comforter is speaking to you. He's showing you things as you go along the road. And you don't go looking at, well, okay, we got so far. Let's see, uh, oh, yeah, I'll take this and I'll put that together. I'll try to put something out of it. It don't work. First of all, I hate the wanting to do that to begin with. But if God sends something that's fresh, it may start as a thought somewhere, and the next you know, it leads to something else, to something else. He's the one that's speaking. I'm glad he can, we are allowed to put it in our own words, Brother Ray. Otherwise, we'd have to say, take notes. Lord said this, Lord said that. And then we just would read it out. It's not how you read it out. It's how, if you have that picture of that revelation in your bosom, it takes that, it illuminates that word. Oh, how beautiful when a revelation comes in. Do you feel sad when you got saved? Were, were you sad when, you, when, when uh, you heard about the six seals being opened? Or, or the 
first resurrection was done in three parts? Huh? Did you have a blue Monday when you were hearing those things? No, he might have not understood every detail. And it's not for everyone to understand every detail, but we're seeing the same picture. There's 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. Well, it's not fair. You meet me 30 and he's 100. I wish the Lord would come down and say, okay, I know you can only fit 30. Here's 100. Try it out. You know what would happen? It'd blow up. You couldn't do it. God is the one that made us that way. And we have to respect what he's done. But Lord, it's not fair. It just sounds like those that, in the parable Jesus was giving concerning the white robes now, not the bride, that chapter, Matthew chapter 22, that each came to work for a penny. They had that attitude. And where are they going to be paid? Not at the rapture, the white robes during the grace age come up over here. And he says, bring the last ones first. That's because of the tribulation period time here. And he gives them a penny. And I can see those of the early age, oh, he's get, they're getting a penny. Maybe, maybe, and those in the middle say, well, maybe we might get two. And those of the first age may say, maybe we might get five, you know. That's how we think. Do you think you're going to think different if you have a, if you if you if we get resurrected? If you're going to be so different, it's not going to be you, right? Talk about not recognizing yourself. So those that are standing, they're there. They're here now at the beginning of that millennium, and he's giving out the rewards of the last ones. And then the first one finally come up and they murmured. Not to the point of sinning. They could not lose their eternal life because they had white robes. And it's not the bride because the bride has been instructed and grown enough that she knows not to murmur against the Lord. Bingo. Uh-oh, overtime again. Okay, had enough for today. Praise the Lord. No, but... I'm glad that God has opened up some of these things concerning this space of time here. That Luke chapter 19 opened up concerning the judgment seat of Christ. Because all we knew before, there was going to be a judgment seat someday, somewhere, somehow. But we didn't realize there was a part that that angelic being, it is Christ operating through it to the living element that's on the earth and the literal Lord Jesus Christ is dealing with all the deceased saints. And it won't be a surprise to us. Let's say we come in in a half hour and we don't know this. And then all of a sudden, hey, we're in the half hour silence. We're at the judgment seat. But look, and then the first question would come to those that don't have the revelation would, in their mind would be, well, what, what about all the deceased saints when, you, when you're judging them? Well, had you been following the revelation all along, it wouldn't be a surprise to you. That day will not catch you unaware. Not on basic salvation, but on your robe of fine linen. Because if I have missing some, it's like having a little mini skirt. Your revelation is not complete. It'll show your knees. I won't go too far there. But what I'm trying to say, the revelation is not complete. Because the revelation that we put on that fine linen is the revelated word of God. It is part of that garment. That's why Jesus said, he didn't say, well, it'd be nice if you watch. He says, pray and watch. I could come in a second watch or a third one. Now, he's not playing tiggly wings with him. Try to guess which one it is. 
Huh? He said it for a purpose. God allowed it to be in his word for a purpose. If he said there's a second and a third, it's because there would be three watches. And only in the time that we're in now in the five-fold ministry that we understand what are the three watches pertaining to. My goodness. Uh, I better stop. I, hey, I, I must come with old age. No, I should remember what my professor told me when I was in high school. He says, I could keep you here an hour and a half and fill you with all kinds of stuff. But he says, the only thing you'll remember is the first 20 minutes. After that, it's going to be just a blur for you. Unless it's in interesting. So he would only put out a lesson for 20 minutes. Oh, he was great. The 20 minute was great, but what came after I didn't like was the homework. All right, putting all those just things aside, let's just stand and look to the Lord this evening. Lord, we're ever so thankful, Lord, that you're mindful, Lord, of each and every one of us. Lord, we don't know what you may have up the road, but Lord, we have to wait on thee in the right time, in the right season. And Lord, we're ever so thankful for what you've given us thus far. Bless my brothers and sisters. Give them traffic mercy on the highway. Bless those that are listening by the way of the internet. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. You're, it's Mother's Day, so you're free to go. For all the mothers that are here. <laughs>